Last week, one of my favorite Substacks, FX Hedgers, did an in-depth review of how the Fed broke the housing market. In short, the American dream of homeownership is dying, and the Fed killed it on behalf of the bozos in Congress. The sordid tale begins with Lyndon B. Johnson in the 1960s, who converted a house from something you worked hard to buy into something bestowed by government on favored political groups. Johnson began with government money for apartments, which the left has always loved since everybody should live in a pod, and then single-family homes in poor areas. Of course, this backfired, pricing the poor out of the homes they've lived in for generations as prices rose and rents rose, breaking down long-standing communities. This took off as inflation soared in the 1970s, driven by Washington's spending for the Vietnam War and Johnson's Great Society welfare program, so-called guns and butter. The inflation drove the Fed to hike rates nearly 20%, which finished off many of the surviving poor. We got a reprieve in the blockbuster Reagan economy, which allowed wages to catch up and made houses affordable again for many Americans, which more or less continued through the 90s, at which point it went south. In the name of compassionate conservatism, Bush the Jr. massively expanded government subsidies to housing while effectively forcing banks to lend to poor people with bad credit in the name of diversity, while incentivizing ratings agencies to look the other way at shell games like reverse amortization partial interest-only mortgages, which was actually a product. Of course, this set up the housing crash in 2008 as millions of bad loans came due, again throwing millions out of their homes. This set up Act 2 as the Fed responded to the housing crisis by forcing interest rates to nearly zero for, it turns out, almost 15 years. This drove house prices up again since low rates artificially boost asset values, whether stocks or houses. Meanwhile, the Fed also poured gasoline, buying up trillions of mortgage bonds to further subsidize mortgages, along with round after round of QE, money printing, in various flavors. Now, beyond the zombie economy these low rates delivered, this meant anybody who already owned a home had hit the Fed jackpot, while the poor and young were increasingly left behind. They had no homes to go up in value. In fact, now they had to buy the expensive homes. In fact, housing is a major driver of that income inequality that journalists obsess over. It is not dog-eat-dog -dog capitalism. It is the Fed. We got another brief Reagan-style reprieve in the Trump economy as jobs and startups grew, and then, of course, COVID hit, when the entirety of Washington lost its collective mind, pouring $8 trillion into the economy in a desperate attempt to buy the lockdowns the journalists and activists demanded, all of which sent inflation in near double digits, sent home prices soaring again, and drove the Fed to, at this point, 8% mortgages that have frozen the entire housing market in amber, since anybody sporting a 3% mortgage cannot afford to sell, and buy another house at eight. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained. The housing market today is betting on lower rates, but that's not going to do it because low rates will simply prop up home prices and seal the lockout on the young and the poor, while also slowing income growth and a repeat of the pre-Trump zombie economy. The end result is what FX Hedgers calls, quote, modern day serfdom, with the poor and especially the young living hand to mouth bystanders to Washington's vote-buying circus. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.